All right, well, I'm excited about today's show. We've talked to our main man, Ken Semples, before. He's a philosopher. He's a theologian. He's with that RTB crew. Yeah, you know me. Reasons to believe. Uh, they're over there in SoCal. That's Southern California for all you Midwesterners like I once was. Uh, he's written several books, Christian Endgame, Seven Truths That Change the World, A World of Difference, Without a Doubt. He has a great podcast called Straight Thinking. I find it very charitable. That's one of my favorite things about it. And also writes Reflections. There's a bunch of other good, smart stuff we could say about Kim, but I have a feeling he wouldn't want us to do that. Although, I do wish he would have become a DJ, like a hip-hop producer, because then his name could be Kenneth DJ Samples. That would be tight. Because samples is where you take part of a record, then you isolate certain sounds, then you loop it in a rhythmic fashion, add other components from other songs, and make a brand new hip-hop song, voila. So, samples. That's impressive. You like that? Okay, well, hey, what's up, Ken? How you doing today? Well, thank you very much. It's good to be with you. And you are a bit of a music guy, right? Uh, I hear you talk about classic rock a lot on the show. Yes, I, I like music. Uh, Steve Winwood is like my favorite uh singer through the years and who else do you like i like the beatles who else beatles do you like always been big uh who else i guess i'm old school i'm one of those old guys yes nothing I'm wrong with that classic uh music well when wow. wouldn't the beatles they're they were uh better than average a yeah, <laughs> little bit better i remember one time i asked you you said Jimi hendrix and bo diddley <laughs> I didn't say Bo did. <laughs> you you did. You just said he's old now. Hendrix, huh? You said he's old now, so he's not the same. No, 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 no. That wasn't Bo Diddley. That that <laughs> who was it? You know, you, you threw me off with such a far fetched <laughs> comment. Who's the old guy? You the saw? old guy. I saw him in concert about a year ago. He's See? eighty-eight. He's eighty-eight now. And Give him he, a break. He has lost it. Give him a break. He's eighty-eight, rocking <laughs> out, man. Did you go to a Bob Dylan concert too? I did. Yeah. I did. See, so Ken, I but you couldn't like... understand what you're saying, right? <laughs> well, <laughs> he, he's, he, uh, I'm glad he sang uh, the uh, the song uh, "Brown Sugar" because that was the only two words I understood <laughs> <laughs> in the whole show. So, uh, Ken, does he sound like your kind of man? We're connected. We're brothers. Okay. Well, that's the... <laughs> today. Though we're not talking classic rock. We're talking classic Christianity. Ooh, radio segue. We're going to be talking about Augustine. Now, the old joke goes, and I personally abide by it that saint augustine is in florida and saint augustine is in heaven do you agree with that i do that's exactly right that's, you, yes. that's the pronunciation that's the correct yes did you ever see that joke article between uh, dave horner and garrett deweese and philo- philosophy of christa i just forgot how to pronounce it where they do these joke debates with all these ad homonyms in the back as an addendum about the correct pronunciation i saw that and Horner was right. He pronounced it Augusta. It's really funny, though, isn't it? It was. It was the. It was really funny. Total nerd humor. You got to look it up if you're <laughs> into that kind of thing. All right. Well, here's what we're gonna do to get the show rolling. I'm gonna wrap Augustine's bio. This is jacked, so I'm giving credit from a Catholic Twitter account called Augustine of Hip Hop, which is pretty funny because he's Augustine of Hippo. And then you are gonna explain what I say. At the end of the rap, and then the show is yours after that. I'll interrupt a lot less, maybe. Ready? Don't count on that. All right. (laughs) My hip-hop and days, they started one August on the streets of Thaugust. When I say this to myself, self, maybe life is more than chasing another score. Do my dare, swipe your pairs, and who knows what for. I ought to change my taste. I ought to try to be chased and let my debt be met by grace, but not yet, not yet. It's been a long journey since then, became a rhetorician. Mama kept praying I'd become a Christian. So there was family tension, I guess I better mention the manic key and thugs, they attracted my attention. Shoot, there was a manic flock. Looked down on the common stock, said, if you ain't talking, Manny, I don't want to talk. I stayed for a few years, Mama, she be shedding tears. Finally got ditched them and they spiritual careers. I be like Odysseus with his turns and twists. Started chilling with a crew of needle platonists. They pointed me to wisdom, had a slamming system, but something still was missing. They talking about God, but didn't know how to listen. That God was all far away. I don't mean to be dissing, but what else can I say? It was like they got the goal, but not the way. Long story short, I kept pressing on. And I bought a bishop by the name of Ambrose of Milan. Paid my way to Christ, I became enticed. The way he told how God descended and was sacrificed. So I told my mama, boy, was she surprised. And I got baptized. And the book of my life got mad revived. Everybody conformed to some kind of norm. But you can only stay fresh if you follow the word may flesh. I try to spread the word. Though I be sounding absurd to the ears of the world. I got to make it heard. So December 17th started tweeting up a storm. Staying true to form. I'm fiery for the kingdom. 
because it's whack to be lukewarm. Peace out. Wow. <laughs> Outstanding. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well. there's one line I changed. He says, Mama, pray I be a Catholic Christian. I didn't say Catholic Christian because, first of all, it made the r- r- rhyme rhythmically odd and had a capital C, so I didn't want to say it. But I've, I said it, so I'm allowed to do it, uh, at least in my opinion. But if Ken doesn't agree, that's okay. But Ken, tell people what I just said about Augustine. Yeah, that was uh, that was great. Uh, I'm I am impressed. Uh, and by the way, I would begin by saying this: since Augustine wrote the City of God, he's the ultimate urban theologian. Oh, wow! Oh, yes. Well done. You <laughs> get it. A plus. Star. 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 You pass your doctoral thesis. Well, look, Augustine is, I think, the most important Christian thinker outside of the New Testament. I mean, he, he might get some competition with Thomas Aquinas, a, a medieval Catholic thinker, or Luther or Calvin, the great uh, Reformation Protestant thinkers, or maybe another individual here and there. But Augustine has a huge influence. He, he is the greatest of the Church Fathers. Uh, that is, he's a lot more sophisticated in his handling of uh, theology and philosophy, apologetics. And he casts a big shadow. He certainly has influenced significantly the Roman Catholics, but I would say every bit as much he's influenced Protestants. Uh, What a lot of people don't appreciate is that Protestants often relate to Augustine every bit as much as Catholics do. Now, one place he doesn't get a great deal of respect is in the Eastern Orthodox tradition. They view him as far too pessimistic. They don't particularly like his ideas of original sin, which, of course, were not his ideas, right. uh, but biblical ideas. So he's so, the Rodney Dangerfield of the Eastern Orthodox yeah, Church. Yeah, he, right. he, he gets a, a lot of critique in the Eastern uh, tradition of uh, Christendom, do but you, a, a, a huge figure. Do you think uh, there's some truth to the cute overstatement that the Reformation was a battle in Augustine's mind, or something like that? Have you ever heard the phrase that yes. talks about that? Yeah, that's a that's a that's What's a great that? that's a great statement. Benjamin Warfield, the great Presbyterian theologian of the early 20th century, said that uh, the Reformation uh, was a debate in Augustine's mind, meaning that uh, Augustine had a very strong view of church authority that would reflect the Catholic thinking in him, but he had an enormous view of the salvation by grace, that would be the Reformation side. So yeah, it's a little bit of an overstatement, but uh, you can tell the kind of influence he had where both both branches of Christendom in the West owed a, a great deal to, to St. Augustine. So give us a little bio, and then we'll flip over to his thought. Yeah, Augustine has quite a life, and you can read about it in the Confessions, which is uh, one of the great Christian books ever written. In fact, uh, R.C. Sproul said that if you've been a Christian for more than two years and you haven't read the Confessions, you're sinning. That's how good that book is. Do you think it's true to say that Augustine was the first individual, or that Augustine was the first modern man? Things like that, the people I do, I do. You know, uh, what's interesting, this is very interesting, uh, the Pope before Francis, this would be Benedict, Mm -hmm. Benedict said he preferred Augustine over Aquinas, which was a huge statement, because because Thomas has a, a, a right. dramatic influence in the Roman Church. But he said, because Augustine was so very personable, that when you read his writings, and I can relate to this, when you read the Confessions, you feel like he's talking about you. And I think Augustine really did write the book that way. He, he was not only writing about his dramatic conversion, but he was really writing about all human souls, uh, restless and, and needing the love and forgiveness of God. So Augustine starts off a very bright fellow. Uh, he, his parents sacrificed to send him to the big university and uh, in North Africa, and he falls away from his Christianity, but he's enormously bright. He becomes a rhetorician. In fact, his goal is to work uh, for the emperor. And um, while he becomes this, this uh, powerful rhetorician and influence in places uh, uh, like Carthage in North Africa, and then in Rome, and then in Milan, uh, he is uh, never fulfilled, never satisfied. In fact, joins a cult uh, called the Manichaean Cult for nine years, a rather bizarre group, uh, but again finds that unfulfilling. He dabbles in skepticism, finds that unfulfilling. 
Then he bumps into a great preacher named Malone, Bishop Malone, uh, Bishop Ambrose, I should say, in Milan, and uh, he, he meets his, his equal in terms of uh, uh, Christian uh, thinking, and of course has a dramatic conversion, um, hears a voice uh, while he is reading Scripture, and he believes that voice was the Lord calling him. And so uh, his mother, Monica, who uh, here in L.A., we have Saint Santa Monica, or uh, Saint Monica, uh, she is uh, a mother who is uh, heartbroken that her son walks away from uh, Christianity, so she's constantly praying. In fact, there's a, a story, it may be apocryphal, but it's a, it's a fun story, that she goes to the bishop and is uh, weeping and crying that her son has walked away from the faith, and the bishop just can't put up with her anymore, and he says, I guarantee your son's going to come back, because not even God can listen to all of that complaint. Uh, but she prays her son uh, back into the kingdom, so to speak, and uh, then Augustine becomes the most significant Christian thinker, not only in the 4th and 5th century, but he'll cast a huge shadow, as we've talked about, both in the Roman Catholic tradition and in the Protestant tradition. Some of the great Augustinian uh, people who really loved Augustine, Blaise Pascal was a big Augustinian, uh, but so was Luther, so was Calvin. Calvin quotes Luther a hundred times in his writings, but Calvin quotes Augustine 2,400 times. Hmm. So you have a lot of people in both the Lutheran and the Reformed tradition of Protestantism that uh, have a lot of admiration for St. Augustine. Yeah, and there's some uh, great quotes that you alluded to from the Confession, such as, Our hearts are restless until they can find rest in you. That's from the yeah. Confessions, and also in regards to his testimony, he says, So I was speaking and weeping in the most bitter contrition of my heart, when, lo, I heard from a neighboring house a voice, as a boy or girl I know not, chanting and oft-repeating, Take up and read. Take up and read. Yeah. Sole yeah. lege in Latin. Sole yeah. lege, yeah. In fact, uh, the song we're going to play after this show, we always play a little bonus track for the podcast-only listeners, is going to be a song called Take Up and Read off wow. of a Shy Lin album, and uh, they give a bunch of resources to read, and it's a really cool thing, and it's taken off that idea. Yeah, I was just going to say, do you do you think maybe some of the, the appeal and, and of, of Augustine and, and something people should be aware of is just, I mean, a lot of ways, just how human he really was. I mean, he, he lived, uh, he had temptations and, and, and issues uh, that uh, resonate all the way to today. Absolutely. I think it's fair to say that uh, Augustine came from, you know, a a family that, that had a lot of challenges and uh, problems. And when he went away to Carthage, he, he uh, cohabitated with a lady. They had an illegitimate child. He talks about uh, his own sexual temptations. Uh, so, you know, Augustine is a real sinner, and he's a real man, and he cries out like, like many of us who have looked in all the wrong places to try to find fulfillment and satisfaction. And and again, I, I'll tell you, you can pick up the Confessions, and you can read it, and you feel like you're talking to somebody who lives in the 21st century. Hmm. So that's that's an amazing thing, because a lot of the ancient works are difficult to read, right. but the Confessions, uh, you can get a lot out of it. He has a warm pastoral heart. It's not just the sort of cold rumblings of a philosopher. Ken, the woman that he was with when he uh, converted, was that the one that he had a child with? Yes, and in, in, in fact, um, when Augustine went away to the big city, big city uh, this was kind of a servant girl that he came connected with. And, and in reality, even though he was uh, rather promiscuous at the time, uh, this was almost like his common-law wife. He, he loved her, was dedicated to her, but according to the time, he was in a different cultural category economic and social category that pro prohibited him from marrying her, but, but he loved her, and uh, they loved uh, his son, and his son, by the way, was also baptized, converted so, to the faith, and was baptized by Amber. Quick question, do you think Augustine paid child support? <laughs> well, uh, I, I think he came through, and yeah, indeed did uh, care about his son. So I've heard criticism that he did not marry her. You wouldn't necessarily agree with that because he couldn't, you said? Well, I'll tell you what, I think it was a regret that he had his entire life that he probably didn't handle it. I'm not saying that he couldn't have married her, but he, he would have been shut out of 
you know, the upper categories. It, it would have been uh, a faux pas, so to speak. But no, I think he hmm. did have regrets about the, the handling of the past. By the way, there is a terrific film came out in 2013 called Restless Heart, published by Ignatius Press, a Catholic publisher. Terrific film about the life of Augustine. It's, it's high on my list as a as a theological film. Oh, he's got a biopic. I, I never knew that. I'm going to have to check that out. Uh, that, that reminds me, one last question in his bio, and then if we are able to switch to some of his thought, because we've only got, well, under 10 minutes left. Um, ethnically, we know he's, uh, geographically, we know he's from North Africa. Uh, I forget which actual country it would be in, but he's, is it Algeria? Yeah. And then, so ethnically, is he probably a Berber? Is there some relation to, for example, modern-day Persians? Well, um, there, there is a lot of uh, speculation about the connection to Berber, but there are Berbers still living in North Africa, and there are still Christians. Uh, in that part of the world. Yes, when I went to France, uh, some of the converts from Islam to Christianity were from Algeria, and they were Berbers, which I know li- yep. I knew very little about until this mission trip to France. So I just yeah. thought that was—I think that's that's interesting. I mean, he's still not, the you know, the w- one way you may see, but he probably was that, but it's uh, sort of a lesser-known ethnic group. Yeah, well, I think that's cool. I mean, I think uh, because, you know, if you look at medieval— artwork he would uh, think differently about maybe what he is. I think it's cool. It shows yeah. the the breadth of Christianity. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So what about his thought? I mean, we especially are interested, you know, go where you want, Kim, but especially on his theology of grace and um, perhaps some of his stuff on the Trinity. But, um, I mean, I'd love to hear what, what you want to talk about to in regards to his thought. Yeah, well, Augustine, of course, is not only a full-time bishop and a, and a leading uh, ecclesiastical individual, but he writes five million words, which is an incredible amount, even at a time when writing was a premium. I don't I don't know how he accomplished what he did, being an, an executive, so to speak, in the Church, and also being a scholar, maybe because there was no TV to draw his attention. Or he used dragon, naturally speaking, but yeah. Well, Augustine, he, he has some controversies, and they're very important. Uh, he deals with the Pelagian controversy. There's a British scholar named Pelagius who comes along and Whoa! says, human beings are not radically fallen, and uh, human beings, if they really uh, are careful and devoted, they can uh, be saved apart from grace. There is grace available if you need it. But Augustine took Pelagius on and argued vigorously and, and convincingly that salvation is, is not something human beings achieve. Uh, it is the gift of, of God. It, it mm. is the grace of God that saves us from first to last. But even our own faith, even our own repentance, is motivated uh, by the grace of God. And so Augustine becomes, uh, and, and he has called this even today, the great theologian of, of grace. And again, that extends down into both the Middle Ages uh, and into the Reformation period, where Luther and Calvin uh, quote Augustine, and I think in many ways they're trying to say, look, the best in the Catholic tradition stand on our side. Yeah, and of course Luther was an Augustinian monk. You know, Ken, uh, I was taking a church history class, and in the meanwhile, in my own private devotion, I was really wrestling with Romans 9 through 11. This is in my sort of pre-Reform days, but seminary days— and um, we were assigned some readings in Augustine, and he was discussing predestination and uh, some other things in this section I was reading. And I think that was sort of the final thing. I mean, the main emphasis was some scripture I was really delving into, but the way Augustine explained it just made sense. And I was like, well, if you can think of it that way, I think I can think of it that way, and that sounds about right. So uh, it plays into my own uh, sort of leaning over to the Reformed. Ken, Ken, what are the Roman Catholics today? You mentioned uh, Pope Benedict. What do they do with his teaching on salvation by grace and predestination? How do they fit that into their system, claiming Augustine? Yeah, that's uh, that's a great question. I I've, uh, know a number of Catholic apologists have debated a, a number of them, and, and have we have even talked about uh, Augustine, and some of them know of my interest and uh, scholarship in the area of Augustine. I think that probably the answer to your question is that there isn't nearly as much emphasis today upon his views of election and predestination. Uh, They do claim him in terms of grace. I mean, the Catholic position, historically, 
is a position of grace. You're saved by the grace that comes out of the sacraments of the Church. Uh, of course, you have to keep yourself uh, in a state of sanctifying grace. So it, it, is, uh, it is an interesting view, and, and at times, for me, a Protestant, a troubling view. But they still uh, appeal to St. Augustine. Um, I think, however, you know, they don't appreciate that uh, the Protestant Reformation, and, and Richard Muller, who is probably one of the leading scholars on Calvin in the country, if not the world, you know, he argues that um, uh, when, when Trent anathematized the Protestants, they anathematized a good bit of the Catholic Church because there were lots of debates uh, before the Reformation about salvation by grace, did it come through faith, or was it completed by works? And there were debates even about the authority of tradition as opposed to Scripture. So uh, those Augustinian themes come all the way down today, and, and I think it probably is an irony that uh, Catholic thinkers recognize that Protestants uh, see you know, a deep connection to St. Augustine. Right. For people who want to know more about St. Augustine, or really probably better to, to read his own stuff, what are, what are the books, the, the areas that you would uh, point them to? Obviously, Confessions, are there others? Yes, I would. Uh, I think the best place is to start with the Confessions, because it is written in such a powerful way. Now, sometimes getting a, a copy of the Confessions that is the most readable, uh, there is a Catholic scholar who published, uh, translated a copy for Penguin Classic, 1961. His last name is Pine Coffin, an interesting uh, name. Uh, but there is also a, a newer version uh, that is uh, a Catholic edition that, that people like. But yes, I would recommend you start with the Confessions. If you're a little ambitious and you want to take on one of the most important works in Western civilization, there is the City of God, which is, again, Augustine critiquing the, the Greco-Roman world and Good resources, Ken, but that is the end of the show. Thank you. We'll see you again talking Augustine. See you next week, homies.